Let's delve into the origins of the Titan story. We'll start with people's hobbies, varying from modest to extravagant budgets. In the case of the Titan event, indulging in this hobby costs a staggering two and a half crore rupees per person. The mission entails an eight-day expedition to witness the remains of the Titanic wreckage, lying 690 kilometers off the coast of Newfoundland, Canada, at a depth of 12,500 feet or 3.81 kilometers. Discovered in 1985, the Titanic wreckage is famously known for splitting into two fragments, located 2,000 feet apart. Ocean Gate Inc., a Washington-based submarine company founded in 2009, organizes this exclusive tour known as the Titan Expedition. Although OceanGate began offering Titanic viewing packages in 2021, the company's ultimate vision is to provide deep-sea exploration experiences comparable to SpaceX or Blue Origin's space travel packages. OceanGate's CEO, Stockton Rush, believes that submarines are statistically the safest vehicles, and he envisions the future of human habitation beneath the sea rather than on other planets like Mars. Clarification is required, when referring to, submarine, the correct term is, submersible. A submersible is a vessel that operates underwater but depends on a surface vessel or a shore crew for support. It may also be a large submarine. On the other hand, a submarine is a powerful, self-sustaining submersible that can operate independently. While all submarines are submersibles, the reverse is not true. OceanGate currently possesses three types of submersibles, Antipodes, Cyclops 1, accommodating five people for 72 hours, and Titan, also known as Cyclops 2. Titan, made of carbon fiber and titanium, can dive to a depth of 4 kilometers. Interestingly, the doors of Titan can only be opened from the outside, and the control is managed using a gaming controller, specifically, Logitech's F710 controller. Titan lacks an internal navigation system and emergency locator beacon, making it unable to send distress signals. Measuring just 22 feet 6.7 meters in length, passengers must remain seated throughout the journey, as there is no standing space. The submersible carries sufficient oxygen to sustain five people for up to 96 hours. Additionally, Titan utilizes SpaceX's Starlink satellites for internet connectivity, as mentioned in a tweet from OceanGate's account. Essentially, Titan is an experimental vehicle that offers an adventurous experience to its passengers, albeit with inherent risks. It is crucial to acknowledge these risks before embarking on the expedition. Now, let's turn to the real story. On June 16, 2023, the MV Polar Prince set sail from Newfoundland, arriving at the Titanic sinking location on June 17. The submersible, Titan, commenced its dive at 9 a.m. local time on June 18. Communication was established during the initial 1 hour and 45 minutes, with updates provided every 15 minutes. After that, all communication abruptly ceased, leaving the situation in darkness. The last recorded conversation occurred around 11.47 am Titan was scheduled to resurface at approximately 6.10 pm however, there was no sign of its return. The submersible's oxygen supply, intended to last 96 hours, was projected to deplete on June 22. While the communication system of Titan may have malfunctioned, the submersible's mobility remains intact. Alternatively, the ballast system might have been damaged, preventing Titan from maintaining its intended buoyancy. At a news conference on Thursday, Rear Admiral John Mauger of the U.S. Coast Guard said that the debris is believed to be the Titan submersible. It is unclear what led to the destruction of the Titan, but it has emerged that the U.S. Navy may have heard it implode. A Navy official told CBS News that, an acoustic anomaly consistent with an implosion, was detected shortly after the Titan lost contact with the surface. There is also speculation that Titan may have encountered a catastrophic event, such as a twist or explosion, resulting in the instant demise of the passengers. Now, let's identify the individuals on board Titan. Shazada Dawood, a British-Pakistani businessman from the Dawood Hercules Corporation, aged 48. Suleiman Dawood, the 19-year-old son of Shazada Dawood. Hamish Harding, a British billionaire, adventurer, aviator, and space traveler. In 2019, he set the record for the shortest circumnavigation of the globe. Paul-Henri Narzoli, a 77-year-old French Navy commander, diver, and expert in driving submersibles. 
Narzoli has visited the Titanic wreckage at least 35 times and is renowned for recovering approximately 5,000 artifacts from the site. He earned the nickname, Mr. Titanic, and was among the first individuals to visit the wreck. The initial photographs of the wreckage were captured by Narzoli and his team. Despite being aware of the risks, he continued his expeditions, stating that one could die without realizing it. Stockton Rush, the CEO and founder of Oceangate, who serves as the pilot of Titan. Rush is 61 years old and expressed his confidence in Titan's invulnerability after comprehensive testing. Unfortunately, this event has presented a tragic statistical anomaly among Titan's expeditions, as it had successfully completed previous missions with 28 people. Titan's certification for operating at such extreme depths was insufficient. Previous missions experienced communication blackouts lasting five hours. Despite receiving warnings from 38 marine experts and facing a lawsuit in 2018 regarding safety concerns, CEO Rush was reluctant to conduct further tests. Moreover, going beyond 1,300 meters with the current acrylic viewport, which allows for observing the Titanic wreckage, posed significant risks. Multiple organizations, including the U.S. Coast Guard, Navy, and Canadian Coast Guard, were involved in the search and rescue efforts. However, the chances of locating Titan were uncertain, with the search area spanning approximately 20,000 square kilometers. The intensification of the search followed a reported banging sound, heard in the Atlantic, but no promising leads had emerged. The challenge was lied in determining the location of Titan to initiate rescue operations, whether it involves raising the submersible and opening the hatch or descending to provide oxygen. The sea covers 70% of our planet, yet 5% of it remains unexplored by mankind. Descending every 10 meters into the pitch black depths adds a tremendous weight of 6.47 kilograms per square inch, exerting enormous pressure on the human body. For instance, at a depth of 2 kilometers, the pressure amounts to 1,270 kilograms per square inch, enough to cause death if the submarine's robust structure were not in place. Additionally, extreme cold is a common cause of fatality in such depths. Although Titan would have attempted to resurface if functioning correctly, even resurfacing would prove futile without someone available to open the hatch, resulting in the passengers succumbing to oxygen deprivation. It is worth noting that Titan's oxygen was expected to run out at 4 p.m. on Thursday, June 22. CEO Stockton Rush's statement regarding the safety of submarines is statistically accurate rather than a mere boast. In 2022 alone, Titan successfully completed numerous expeditions with 28 passengers. Thus, the current event represents an unfortunate statistical anomaly. However, it is ironic that Rush's visionary initiative may have led to his tragic fate aboard his own ship. It has been suggested that the name, Titan, might be problematic, as it bears similarity to, Titanic. However, it should be clarified that while Titanic sank on its maiden voyage, Titan had previously completed successful missions. Titanic's sister ship, the Olympic, which was of the same size and slightly less tonnage, was retired in 1935 after 24 years of service. Another sister ship, Britannic, served as a hospital ship during the war but sank in 1916 after hitting a mine. Contrary to popular belief, the builder of the Titanic, Harland and Wolfe, never officially claimed that the ship was unsinkable. However, the British shipping line White Star Line, responsible for the Titanic, advertised that the vessel was designed to be unsinkable, as far as it is possible to do so. This claim applied to both the Olympic and the Titanic. The myth of the Titanic's unsinkability emerged after its sinking when newspapers sensationalized the comments made by Philip Franklin, the vice president of the International Mercantile Marine Company, parent company of the White Star Line. Franklin had expressed his belief in the ship's unsinkability based on expert opinions, which prompted the press to perpetuate the notion. Additionally, there were rumors of someone stating, God himself cannot sink this ship, attributed to either the captain or a crew member, but the accuracy of this account remains unconfirmed. It is worth noting that, Atlantica, refers to the Atlantic, derived from the term, Sea of Atlas. In Greek mythology, Atlas, a titan, bore the weight of the sky on his shoulders for eternity, standing on the far western edge of the flat earth to prevent the sky from collapsing onto the ground. Furthermore, the name, Titanic, Titanium, or, Titan, 
finds its origins in Greek mythology. These names reference the Titans who ruled before Zeus and Poseidon, the Olympian gods. Hyperion, Oceanus, Cronus, and Rhea are examples of Titans, while Zeus, the son of Cronus and Rhea, is classified as an Olympian god. The name, Olympic, for the Titanic sister ship derives from the location Olympia in Greece, which, in turn, takes its name from Mount Olympus, the majestic abode of the Greek gods. Lastly, the name, Cyclops, for the other submersible is inspired by the Cyclops, a one-eyed monster depicted in Greek mythology. Subscribe Double Z for more informative video.